White-tailed deer can be found in almost any part of the United States. They are ruminants, which means they are herbivores and have a four-chambered, complex stomach, unlike most mammals, which are monogastric and have a simple, single-chambered stomach. Ruminant stomachs are actually very interesting because each compartment of their stomach does a different job along the digestive tract. Other ruminants you may be familiar with include cattle, goats, and sheep. These animals, along with deer, chew cud. Deer are prey animals. They scare easily and have the ability to run up to 30 miles per hour. They have white on the underside of their tail, hence the name white-tailed deer. When frightened, deer can raise their tail up to show the white underside. This behavior is called flagging. The white undersides of their tails help fawns follow their mothers when running away from danger. Speaking of fawns, mother deer often keep their fawns in tall grass and leave them alone for long periods of time. This is not because she is abandoning her baby, but because she wants to protect it. One adaptation that fawns have is that they have no scent. This makes it easy for them to hide from predators among the tall grass. When the mother deer leaves her baby alone, she is making sure that her scent does not lead predators to her baby. Another evolutionary adaptation that these fawns have is their spotted pelt. It is great camouflage and helps them blend in with their surroundings. Fox Run Environmental Education Center gets calls all the time from well-meaning people who tell us they have found an abandoned fawn. If you think you found an abandoned fawn, wait 24 hours to see if the mom comes back for it, unless you are 100% positive that the mother is dead or the fawn is injured. We do not want to kidnap these babies and take them away from their mothers. Like I said before, mother deer often leave their babies alone for long periods of time. Sometimes this could be in your backyard. Please be patient and wait before potentially taking it away from its family. from Fox Run Environmental Education Center. And this is George. Uh, George uh, came to us. Uh, I actually had a call from a finder. And so when someone calls about a fawn, <laughs> when someone calls about a fawn, we always ask them to uh, monitor the situation for 24 hours uh, because the mother deer does leave the fawn and goes about her business. She thinks if she's far away that she's drawing predators away from the fawn. And so, um, so the finder uh, was monitoring the situation and um, George was very weak and dehydrated. And um, so over here we have Lenny. Um, Lenny was one of our um, other fawns that came in very uh, sick. Uh, he was very lethargic. He was covered with um, fleas and ticks and um, later it was discovered that there was a dead doe um, down the road and so we're assuming that his mother had been hit by a car and he had been alone for uh, several days and was so in a weakened state. So um, in Lenny's situation, if a fawn is found and he, he or she is nearby uh, a dead 
uh, dough on the road, um, then we say go ahead and bring the, them in. If a fawn is just lying down in the grass um, and maybe looks dehydrated or looks lethargic, uh, we still use that 24 hour window. We wanna make sure that we are not making an orphan. So the mother deer is always going to be a much better mother than we, uh, the human mother. And so we always want to give mom a chance uh, to, um, to come back and, uh, and get um, her fawn. If you do find a fawn that needs care and you are absolutely positive that its mother is not coming back, please contact a local wildlife rehabber. In Kentucky, it is illegal to keep wild animals captive and can potentially cost you jail time. In addition to this, deer do not make good pets and they require a very specific diet. Even if you have the intention to raise a fawn and eventually release it, being raised as a pet will not give it the survival skills it needs once it grows up.